Gotcha. The emulsion and seals the super cup. Uh, storage of radiographic film. Uh, and this is when, once the, uh, excuse me, once the film. Uh, once the film is done, so this is a, a film library. You know, how long and, and, and what is the humidity you want and what is the, uh, the temperature you want. <coughs> <coughs> All right. uh, the length of the storage uh, depends on the state law. And I told you before that California has seven years, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two exceptions, right? Mi three exceptions. Minors, for how long do you store them? Uh, until they're 18. 18. 18. Until they're 18. Now, how, now think about it. if uh, a, a child, by then it's not a child, it's like a grown person, uh, say 17 and a half, right? Okay, at that, uh, about if you do an, an x-ray at that point, what happens? It gets extended okay. another seven years. Well, it's not, it's not, it's still a minor. You keep it for, okay, keep, keep it for, for as, as long as it's necessary. Say the child doesn't have another x-ray in seven and a half years. You still keep it, okay? You still keep it. Now, imagine if that child or that person at 17 and a half, has another x-ray at 25 or at 24, then a new cycle of seven starts, okay? So what do you do with the previous one? Yeah, eventually you get, get rid of them. Uh, but mammograms are different. Mammograms are different. Mammograms you keep them for life, okay? All right, and the other exemption uh, here is legal cases. Cases that are going through legal issue and films and images that might end up in court, well, you keep them indefinitely until the court says this case is settled. But a lot of times, civil cases never really end because they can keep coming back. In criminal cases, sometimes they have a, you can go so far back, but in civil cases, you can't, so you have to keep on going. So you keep them indefinitely. All right. Okay, so let's move on to automatic processing. Okay, let me take you back to that picture I had shown you before. Uh, before I move on to automatic processing, any questions about film that we have looked at so far? Yeah. Um, in terms of like the tests that we're gonna have, do you want us to um, know the temperatures in Celsius? Because the boards will be Celsius? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you should be able to convert that. That will be the easiest thing. Okay. And instead of memorizing, we might as well know how to do it. Okay. You guys remember how it's done? It's <laughs> 5 divided by 9 plus 32 uh, from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Yeah. I, I don't remember. <laughs> That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah. I have to look it up. My brain is getting old. Like 5 divided by 9 plus 32. That sounds yeah. in the ballpark. Sounds like it. That will be the easiest thing. <laughs> okay. Do that. What is it? Is is you know you have the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 32 again. There's a five over a nine or a nine over a five, something like that. So right? Five over nine. <laughs> five over nine. Okay. All right. So look it up. I have to take the test. <laughs> Just throw it out there. All right. Uh, yeah. But yeah. No temperatures. No temperatures. All right, very quickly here, uh, let's go back to this picture. So remember, each one of these areas is a different tank, right? Boom, 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 different tanks. Okay, they do different things. Developing fixer, wash tank, dryer, okay? Now, how's this mechanism, how's this assembly all set up? The assembly is set up in such a way that you're gonna have consistent, repeated process, okay? So you want to do over and over each each film that goes through the system is developed, is fixed, is washed in the same way. Okay, you don't want any difference. What it creates, it creates consistency for the radiologist. Then you're not then they don't end up with one image looking darker or lighter than another one. Same contrast. So every every exam, 
every film is processed in the same way. Make sense? Okay, that, that's, that's the whole reason, and that's the beauty of, of having this system. Obviously, we're comparing this. This is being compared with manual hand, hand developing, okay? Because with hand developing, you know, you put the film and then there's a, a, a watch, there's a clock somewhere, and thing gives you a bell and then you move it. But how about if your patient's a screaming in the back, so you leave and then, you know, you, it's not, it was not consistent. So that's the comparison. Obviously, we're not comparing this with DR and CR, right? Even though I have to tell you, and I'm probably I'm gonna surprise many of you, the resolution with film is outweighs uh, any digital system. There are other advantages, and that's why digital systems have taken over. But the quality of the image, the resolution, the ability to see more anatomy, it was with this. That's why it took so many years for mammography to really switch from film to digital systems. It was the last of the uh, diagnostic radiography areas that switched to digital systems because it was so, uh, because you had so much more resolution, okay? I'm not talking about contrast or density, I'm talking about resolution. You had more resolution with, with film and chemical uh, development. It's, it still is. Digital systems are, are, are lousy, really. Okay. Uh, we can't compare it. But anyway, but there were there were many other advantages that digital systems bring, and that's why people move away from it. All right, let's take a quick look here. So automatic processing, one, once again, we're comparing it with manual uh, uh, developing, okay? So advantages, faster, 90 seconds, and there were you know, and there were processors that even worked with 45 seconds, okay? Uh, what happened, many hospitals had a smaller uh, dark room, smaller uh, developing units. In the OR, for example, where you needed film right away, they have 45 seconds uh, developing. Uh, so it was faster, uh, better image quality, once again, in comparison to uh, comparison to manual uh, developing. Okay. So components, very quickly, you had a transport system. Now we're talking about the, the actual machine, right? So you had a transport system, okay, a dryer system, a replenishment system, circulating system, and a temperature control system, okay? So hopefully that the name can tell you what, what they do. Obviously, transport is to move the films. Dryer is to get the film dry. Replenishment system is to replenish the chemistry within the uh, 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 processor. Circulating system is a way to move those chemicals. Because okay? if you don't move, don't agitate those chemicals, then, then you have areas of higher concentration and, and, and lower concentration. Many times with the chemicals that were used, if you don't agitate them, then you have uh, the most concentrated areas on the bottom of the tank, and the upper areas were not concentrated enough, okay? And then you temperature control. Temperature, remember, is very important. The concentration and the temperature are very important in, in this process. If the temperature was off, if the chemistry, the concentration was off, then your images do not appear uh, in the way they are supposed to appear. All right, so let's take a look very quickly. Transport system. <clears throat> and the transport system is made up of racks. Let me show you what a rack looks like. This is a, a fixture rack, and this is what they look like. And so they, they go on a tank, the processor tank, they go boom. They're immersed in, in this case, this one was fixture. So actually this was a wash. So this was, uh, it was immersed like this, in water. But the other ones, the other racks look exactly the same, just a little larger. The, the development was like twice as big as this one. Um, and so what you, you can see here, you can appreciate here, set of, uh, so what they did is, is a bunch of uh, 
uh, chains and pulleys and gears. As you can see, we're not, once you start moving the gears, the whole system moves, right? So once the film goes here, it is trapped. You see how close these things are? And so the film is trapped. And as it's moving down, you, know, you see the, the film go in and come out on the other end. And then it goes, in this case, it will go boom, it will jump into the, uh, into the drive. Okay? <coughs> so this is called a rack. Okay? These are called the rollers. Okay? And on top of it, there is a uh, uh, guide shoes. And those are called the uh, crossover racks. And they help to guide the film. So when the film comes here, like this, you have this thing just guiding it to the next tank. Make sense? OK. All right. And, and the dry system is, 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 is all of these gears that you have in there. So let's take a look. Now, rollers. You have different types of rollers. Okay. Um, these rollers on the outside, they are called transport rollers, right here. Let me show you the picture next uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are the uh, transport rollers, and on the bottom, you find what I'm showing you, uh, what I'm showing you uh, there uh, on the right-hand side. You have in the middle, you have something called the master roller. And it's a big roller there. It's big, and I don't know if you can see it, but you, you guys will probably see it. So you guys are gonna be my witness. So they are right there as a master roller. And the master roller is surrounded by a smaller set of rollers. They are smaller than the uh, transport rollers, and they are called the planetary rollers, okay? They surround the master roller, and so when the film comes here, then it helps to turn the film. Here you have this uh, aluminum uh, plates called the guiding shoes, or guide shoes, see it here? Okay, those are called the guide shoes, and so they move the film, okay? It helps with turning the film. So far so good? Yeah? Where's the transport roller? On, the, on this picture, I mean. this picture, all of these guys, all of these guys, and the are, planetary ones, the planetary ones are going to be here, and they are a little smaller than than this, than that has been shown here. They're right here. Okay. Look at here. Yeah. See, those are planetary rollers. Remember, the planetary rollers surround the master roll. Okay. All right. Okay. So transport racks, three uh, series of rollers. Okay, we already looked at. Okay, transport, planetary, and, uh, and the master. So provide constant tension to move the film through each tank. All right. So transport racks, turnaround equipment uh, at the bottom of each tank. So each tank had this setting here, where you had the master roller and the planetary rollers, and the guy shoes. This whole assembly is called. Uh, the turnaround equipment, okay, or the turnaround assembly, this whole thing here. The crossover network, similar to turnaround equipment in the transport racks. Uh, you know, misaligned shoe guides can scratch film. If they were not properly set, uh, they can scratch the film because Remember, the film comes up like, so the film comes up, let's say here is where it goes in, goes around, and when it comes up, you have this, something similar to what I have here for the guiding shoes. You have this aluminum plates, and the film comes like this, hits here, and then it's turned around. So if they are not properly aligned, or if they were not properly aligned, then you would have to scratch the films, okay? Uh, entrance rollers. The entrance rollers are what you find at the beginning, okay? Uh, let me show you here quickly. Let me show you here at the very
very beginning of the processor, you have, I don't know if you had noticed before, these are the entrance rollers, okay? And their job is to grab that film. They don't really have a rack. This section here is not called a, a rack. Uh, I don't know why, they just call them entrance rollers, okay? And then you put them into the uh, developing rack. <coughs> Line shoes can scratch the film. Um, entrance rollers, I already told you what they are. Film feeding, okay? Always, when film is, it, you're feeding the film, always is straight along the short axis. What do I mean by that? For example, if. Uh, can I borrow a piece of paper? Yeah, just, just that, that. Can I borrow this? Yeah, okay, so, meaning that. If it's going like, like you have to feed the film, it's gonna go like this, okay? Along, I'm sorry, along the short axis, so it will go like this. Why is that important? Because when you feed, when you first feed the film, there is a laser, and that laser, what it does is, is checking, and it's measuring, okay, how many films you put. And so the, if you're putting it this way, then you're tricking the machine, and it will replenish the chemistry before it's needed. So by having it this way, then you can count how many films went in, how many uh, inches of film have, have gone in. Are you following me? Okay, so that's why in the short end, short edge of the film. Or short axis. Thank you. Okay, so far so good? And that's all I want you to know. We're not going to get into any more specifics than that. Easy, right? Yeah. All right, good. All right. The drive system is a series of gears and mechanical devices that turn the rollers. That's their function. So you have this gear here, so you bring a chain here. Okay, and this thing will. Okay. All right. So driven by a single motor. So the whole thing, okay? Go back to that picture. I'm not going to go back, but if you see the, the picture of the whole uh, assembly, the, the, the actual processor, there is a motor. And it looks like a, I don't know, like a little motor, like a, I don't know, uh, like in a small motorcycle, like a tiny motorcycle motor and with a chain. Okay, that's, that's what it looks like. There's nothing special. It, Electric, obviously it's not gasoline, but it's electric, okay? The speed of the motor determines the length of time for processing, okay? And not every processor processes films at the same speed. For example, mammography was processed at a lot of slower speed because you wanted to maximize contrast. And so you wanted the film to be in the chemistry a little longer. However, you reduce the temperature. So the temperatures they use in mammal was different, was lower. Uh, but the film is spent more time in the chemistry, okay? Uh, and so, you know, you have an engineer or you have a QC tech that will set that speed, okay? Uh, drying, okay? To dry the radiograph after being processed is basically a blow dryer is a big blow dryer there really that's what it is and a set of fans and they blow air to the dryer <coughs> <coughs> all right uh, you can read that and I, I explained it to you the other day how important it is to dry it because otherwise the films come out humid all right uh, so the dryer system at the very end of the processor what you have is uh, a rack, specially designed rack, uh, with holes in the middle. I talked about those special rollers. And but they still squeeze, okay, squeeze the film to get some excess water out of, out of it. Okay. Uh, 
so remove it, excess uh, water and hot air is blown through it. All right, that was it. That's a drying point. Okay. I know your textbooks talk more about it, but it's, it's really not necessary. I just want you to have an idea, just in case. If it happens that you end up working with film, when you become a technologist, go back to your textbooks, or you can email me, <laughs> see if, uh, yeah. Uh, and tell me it's an emergency, otherwise I might not answer you. Because <laughs> so I'll be busy with my new students. All right, so the replenishment system. There are different types of replenishment replenishment system. The most common, the two most common are the following, okay? The purpose of both, either one, they are to replace chemicals or they are, as they are depleted. Remember, when you have a film going through all this chemistry, okay, then you're using the electrons and the ions that are found in the chemical, right? And so they get depleted. So you need to constantly feed constantly provide new chemistry to the uh, uh, system. Okay, two types, uh, the volume replenishment and flood replenishment, okay? Flood replenishment is just saying that you have a content replenishment of, of, of chemistry, and is any overflow is, is goes down. By the way, it doesn't go down the drain, any drain, it goes down into a special, uh, a chemical tank where is this disposed? Huh? Like a reservoir? Yeah, and it's disposed of properly. It doesn't go with the, with our drinking water or, or, or rainwater. And the flood that's the flood replenishment. And the volume replenishment, you just put a specific amount. This is more used if you have, uh, for example, in a smaller clinic. You know, you may be processing 20 extras a day or so. That's, that's fine, okay? Because the chemistry will be, will be fresh. You might change it every other day or so. Food replenishment is for a busier place where you constantly keep adding more, more chemistry. Okay, flood replenishment, periodically replenish chemicals regardless of the number of field process. Like I said, maybe every other day, you just change the whole chemistry, okay? Does not? Oh, you will have to write it down. <laughs> or take a picture. No, oh, man, you guys are spoiled. <laughs> Don't lose the pictures, though. <laughs> All right, so flood replenishment. Uh, so periodically replenish chemicals regardless of the number of, number of films that you have uh, that you put through the process, okay? So maybe you already have a set date. Every other week, every other day, every day, whatever. That is, you just come in and replenish it, regardless of how many, either you run one film or you run 25 films, right? And like I, like I was explaining to you before, for a small volume of films, if you have in a small clinic, 30 to 60 films per day, that's nothing, okay? So there's no need to stretch your, your, your wallet because you can do this you can get away with this uh, complete complete replenishment every two or three uh, a days like I said before <coughs> in, 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 an eight, in an eight hour day uh, all right volume replenishment a volume of chemicals replaced for each film that is processed when more than 50 <coughs> or 60 right? wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry guys, I, I, I said it wrong. The, the volume replenishment uh, replaced for each film that is processed, so they measure, and this is what I'm saying here, when more than 50, 60 films are developed, then you replenish, then you, you add more to the chemistry, okay? That make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So the way it works with volume replenishment is the following. Four to five millimeters of developer, milliliters of developer per one inch of film. So that's why the laser that I was describing before becomes important. Okay, and that's why you want to 
feed the uh, films, okay, uh, crosswise, okay, on the uh, shorter end, okay. Uh, eight of six to eight milliliter fi fixer per inch, and so every time you you measure the inches and then with the laser and then. Uh, more chemistry is, is added to it. Um, okay, and this is important because otherwise you're not going to have consistency in your films. So you have to follow uh, the manufacturer's specifications. Okay. Uh, hmm? specifications, the starter solutions, acetic acid and potassium bromide will be added to fresh develop for chemistry. And that's very important. Why the acetic acid? I talked about it last week. pH balance, exactly. Boom. Good. Uh, the seasoning of the uh, of the chemistry, okay, is is important, okay, and because you gotta give it time. A lot of times when you put all the fresh chemistry in and it's mixed, you need to give it time for the chemistry to be, to actually be mixed, okay, and become active, all right? It requires use of running process for about 15 to 20 minutes prior to the, to the process, okay? Even if the temperature is, is, up, is, is, is ready, you need to wait for the chemistry to get active, okay? That makes sense? Yes? No? All right, a few things. Uh, processor solution safety. Okay, this is very important. I've been talking about this before. Okay, uh, we have uh, all of them. All of these chemicals are not good for you, hazardous materials. And so, because of it, uh, then there gotta be someone in your hospital, in your clinic, that is in charge of that has gone through special training through OSHA. OSHA is the Occupational Health and Safety Administration. It is, uh, what is it called? It's not a, a department, but it's a, um, what do they call this? Is it an organization? No, it's an agency of the federal government, but it, but it has another name. It's not a specific agency. The difference is this, okay, when you have an agency that is an official agency of the government, then it has gone through Congress. Congress said, we need this. This was passed by a president. So what do they call it? When a president said, okay, we need, huh? Kind of like an executive order saying, we need someone to be in charge of this. And so this is how OSHA went, went through. So it's a mandate, isn't it? Yeah, one of the two, I can't, I, I, yeah, I can't remember. So in any case, it's a, federal, it's a federal entity, okay, that uh, deals with all chemicals that are used in industry. Okay, and how to do cleanups, and in case of an emergency, what do you do? Okay, and so they keep track of all, well, not all of the chemicals, because did you guys know that before 1970, in this country, there was no control of chemicals? So there are many chemicals out there that we don't know, uh, we don't know anything about it. Nothing. Even the government doesn't know. And some of those chemicals are still being used. But by law, it was only from 1970 on is that where we have records of, you know, emergency cases or just any information about that chemical. Anyway, so that's why OSHA came about, okay? Also, the Environmental Protection Agency is involved, okay? Because you need to learn, okay? So you clean, you, you're clean up in your hospital. Your hospital is clean, your department in your area is ready to be used and you can bring patients in. But what do you do with all the waste material? So the EPA comes in and they are pretty much in charge of telling uh, whoever is doing the cleaning how they need to get, how they need to get rid of it. A lot of times, a lot of times it's incineration. Not always, but for example, with biohazard materials, it's typically what it is, incineration. H high temperatures extremely high temperatures. Okay, the Department of Transport Transportation is also involved. 
Okay? How? Transporting these chemicals. How, exactly. Like how you move that this this chemicals. Okay. How you move these chemicals. Right? Crazy, isn't it? You need a agency, you need a department to do everything. Uh, also the material safety data sheets, you guys know what that is? MSDS? Yeah. Huh? No, the material safety data sheets. Uh, explains and he has all the details about a specific chemical. Where do you think you will find this in in uh, in a hospital? At every station. Huh? In every department. Not in every department. Because there's, for, for example, radiology. We're pretty much moving from chemicals, so you don't find them anymore. But when we had um, uh, chemical processing, yes, we, we had something like that. There are many areas, La the lab will have this, the pharmacy will have this, environmental services will have something like this, where they describe what each chemical is, what is it made of, and in case of an emergency, what you need to do or who you go contact, okay? How do you do cleanup? So everything about that chemical is found in, in the MSDS, okay? And I told you this before, when you're getting close to chemicals or processing, make sure you wear uh, eyewear, glasses, special safety glasses that cover all the sides, okay? And there is also, if there are chemicals in your area, there needs to be an area where you can wash your eyes. Have you, have you seen those wash your eyes? They mm -hmm. look like two bowl, bowls like that with holes in them. They look like eyeballs, yeah. Right? And they are so you can clean your eyes. Always rubber gloves and apron. Okay. All right, you guys have that one? Yes, you do. You can see it right there. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's not all the bullet points. Hmm? We don't have all the bullet points from that last one. Oh, really? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Like, okay, there you go. Go away. All right, so the function of the uh, circulating or, or recirculating system is to agitate the chemicals, right? Uh, and also to remove reaction particles by the use of filtration systems. Okay. All right, in addition, it helps to stabilize the temperature. What you have, how do you think you heat up this, this, <coughs> these chemicals, guys? Let's see if you've been reading ahead. The question is, how do you heat up the chemicals? How? Yeah, there is a warmer, and that warmer is on the bottom of the tank, okay? And if you leave it like that, then what happens is the bottom of the tank not only is hotter, okay, but it will have a higher concentration, especially if you don't have good agitation. And so that's why with the circulating system, you're mixing that chemistry, okay? And, and by the way, when I say the circulating system, there is nothing else. The rollers are your circulating system, okay? When they are moving, you're circulating the chemistry. It's not that you have pumps or anything. No, nothing fancy like that. All right, agitation and circulation. Agitation keeps solution contact with heater elements in the bottom of the tank and prevents layering of chemicals. Okay, maintain developer temperature and heating element is controlled by a thermostat. Also found at the bottom. Okay, when that thermostat uh, changes, okay, if it's not within that gap of temperatures that you can use, then boom, it goes on or it goes off. with the sheet. This is light. <coughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. All right, maintains a temperature control system. So this is your, your heater and your temp thermostat. Maintains all three solutions at com compatible temperatures. Remember, the water has to be hotter or cooler than the other chemistry. Cooler. How much cooler? 
told you that before. No more than five right. degrees. No more than three to five degrees, okay? All right, so you have a heat exchanger, so a heater, okay? And typically what you're gonna have is with a 90 second processor, with a 90 second processor, you want the temperature to be between 92 and 95 Fahrenheit or 33 to 35 centigrades. <clears throat> So it's not as extremely hot, okay? Uh, this is you know, it's warm. This is like a, you get into a, I don't know, hot springs or something. It's probably even hotter than this. Okay, and two minute processor, take a look, 28 to 30. Why the difference? More time. Huh? More time. You need more time. Exactly, so it's, look, it's two mint processors, so that's why you keep the film there longer. Hmm? Mammography, yeah. Okay, so silver recovery. I'm not gonna go over all of them. I'm just gonna give you, so these are all the different types of recovery systems there are, guys, okay? All of them. Uh, this is all I'm gonna say about the silver recovery. You wanna get silver back, Okay, you get a slotch of silver, okay? And what you do is you sell it back to the company, okay? They have a special filters, uh, and they can be any type of recovery, any of this. Are you responsible for knowing that? No, don't worry about it. Um, yeah. hmm? mm -hmm. you, can, you can just say, you write yourself a note. All I need to know is this is silver recovery, so we can, so the hospital can resell that silver. Uh, other processing methods, okay, and there are many here, okay, all right, rapid processing, and I had described this before, the 30 second, uh, rapid processing will be 30 seconds or 45 seconds processors, okay, what happens here is you have a concentrated chemicals is way up, higher temperatures too, so things are very hot and very concentrated, so that's why you can develop those those films right away, 30 seconds, okay? Extended processing, three minutes. Typically, this is done for single emulsion, MAMO, okay? Longer time in developer, greater contrast, okay? Lower patient dose, okay? So for MAMO, two minutes or three minutes. Daylight processing systems. Daylight processing systems were faster, okay? Total minute, to and total minute from the moment you, pr you put the film in, okay, uh, until the film comes out. You said, well, isn't that longer than, than 90 seconds? Yes, but here you're not doing, you're not going into a dark room, okay? So the way daylight systems work is uh, you have your, your cassette. That's a little bit confused. So you have your cassette. Your cassette is put into um, into uh, uh, an item, and, and there are many brands, many designs, okay. and they have slots that almost looks like CR. For those of you familiar with CR processing, uh, almost looks like that. And so you put your film, your cassette, actually not just the film, the cassette, without going into a dark room. And that was the, the nice thing about daylight systems. You put it in, and then you had an automatic thing. I don't know how it works exactly, how they open it. They open the fin, open the cassette, then they had they a vacuum, suck the film, and boom, move an arm, mechanical arm, and boom, dump it into the processor, into the chemical, into the feed tray. Okay, so you didn't have to go into the dark room. The only time you went into the dark room was when you needed to add more film to the daylight processing. Does it make sense? Yeah? Okay. All right. If you guys, if you're going to be working with film, if it happens that you work with film, probably this is what you're going to be using. So that was towards the very end of process, automatic process. This is what it was used. And dry processing. Images can also be processed uh, without chemicals. Okay, you still have a film, 
even no chemicals, okay? So it eliminates the darkroom, eliminates chemicals. There's no special plumbing, okay? Reduces cost, higher throughput. And what they use, they use lasers. They can use laser or they can use heat, okay? And then you end up with a film. This was typically used for ultrasound, for CT, and for MRI, but not for, for diagnostic. I, at least I never saw it, okay? All right, that's it, done, <laughs> done. All right, now let's talk about image intensifiers. Now here we're gonna spend time, because you're still responsible to know image intensifiers. All right, you guys need a break? Okay, take a break. All right.